So what we've got here is Mark three of my flow frame honey pump. So I've just prototyped it out of uh, plywood because it's uh, compostable. Um, the final version will be made out of um, acrylic. Um, but it's a different way of pumping the honey out of the trough in the bottom of a flow frame. So at a high level, it consists of a long copper pipe and a loop of this bead rope, bead chain, this stuff. You use it for opening and closing your window blinds. Um, so it's got a little doodad at the end there. And on this end, we've got the pump body. And then inside there is a little sprocket around which the bead chain wraps. And then uh, the clear plastic tube you see here is that that locks into the bottom of the flow frame to access the honey. Um, so this was uh, the, the goal of the design here is to get the honey out faster. Uh, with my older auger based system, once the flutes were fully full of honey, you couldn't pump it any faster. And also, once the honey was drawn into the pump body, there was nothing to pull the honey off the flutes, only gravity. Um, and a little bit of pressure from the incoming honey. Um, so there was sort of a hard limit on how fast you could extract honey using uh, an auger down, down the tube uh, because there was no positive pumping pressure forcing it out. It was only just gravity pulling it off the bottom. Um, so in this design, this uh, port here uh, will have a, 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 a sort of an aperture on it into which one of these will fit um, to corral the honey down a tube. So you're looking at it right now from the bucket perspective and the honey would be coming straight at you. And the general principle is that this turns, it's pretty stiff, and that pulls the bead rope along. And the action of that moving through the trough of honey will draw the honey along with it. Because um, the honey is quite viscous and it likes to stick to things, like if you're stirring a spoon in some honey, lots of honey will stick onto the spoon and be pulled around with it. So the principle here is that as this, uh, as this rotates, the, the honey will stick to the bead rope. And then once it gets down into here, it hits this section where there's nowhere for the honey to be. Uh, so it's physically forced off the sprocket, forced off the string, and then falls out the bottom into your bucket. Um, so down on this end, we've got this little little feature here that in, ensures that the, the bead chain rolls nicely out of the end of the pipe, as opposed to just sort of snagging on the sharp end of the pipe. Um, once you get it all lined up, it moves pretty freely. Um, now the one, the one uh, issue here you may have seen is that I have a knot here holding, well, a cable tie twisty tie, holding the ends of the bead rope together. So for this to work, this bead rope needs to be a continuous loop with no joins, or at least no joins that won't fit through this copper pipe. And the inside diameter of this copper pipe is a mouse fart above the outside diameter of this um, bead chain. So any join has to be a really snug one. Um, so I've done a bit of experimentation with joining this stuff. When you buy it, it comes with these little clippy-doos and the idea is you get one of them in there and you pop it in that side and you get another one and you pop it in that side and you click it together and Bob's your uncle. Um, unfortunately, obviously, this won't fit through my tube. Um, so, something I've discovered is that this stuff is a thermoplastic. If you warm it up, it goes um, pliable. So what I've had some success with doing is cutting a bead in half, cutting two beads in half, then warming them up with the hot, hot air rework gun and then squish them together um, and then hold them together until they form one bead out of two halves. And that works alright. It's a bit hard to get the, the cut um, clean. I have also experimented with um, just sort of filing down a bead until it's halfway and then heating that up and, and squishing them together. There's, that, that's an unsolved, it's an imperfect solution currently. Um, I've also tried cutting them in half and then gluing them together. Um, that kind of worked but didn't really hold up under tension. So that's, that's an outstanding problem to fix, um, but the purpose of this first, first prototype of Mark III was to get the whole plan lined up, laid out. Um, this is the first time I've really done this stacked laser cut approach. Usually I do things with 3D printing, 
um, and all the laser cut stuff is stuff that's strictly 2D. Um, but this approach works pretty well and the final version uh, made out of acrylic will be glued together with uh, acetone which forms a really really strong bond because it sort of liquefies the acrylic slightly and then two pieces of acrylic become one. Um, but I like using plywood because you know, it's cheaper and more disposable than acrylic. But that's where I'm at. I um, haven't actually tested this yet obviously. Uh, I've got to get the drive mechanism sorted out um, but I'm thinking it's going to be very similar to the one I used last time. I have some some spur gears that uh, some some gears that you know, right on the side or something. I'll work it out. But yep, progress continues. I'll go back.